Imagine if Americans found a way to protect the borders without costing taxpayers a dime and, oh, by the way, creating jobs while doing it. Well, it sounds too good to be true, right? Our next guest says it's possible with his five-step plan for immigration success. Here to lay it out for us is the author of Press 2 for English, Fix Immigration and Save America, Dr. Rob Sabani. Good to see you, doctor. Thank you, Gretchen. All right, so let's start with the title, Press 2 for English. What do you mean? What I mean is that if we don't continue thinking about immigration, if we don't start managing immigration, pretty soon we're going to be pressing that button on our dials and have an option for a different language other than English. And that's not good for immigrants, and that's not good for the United States. So of your five-point plan, the first point is establish English as the official language. There's been blowback about that, right? Yes, but unfortunately, linguistic welfare is entrenched, and linguistic welfare doesn't help immigrants. Immigrants who know English have 32% higher wages, and so we need to make English the official language. No more other languages on ballots. When we go to vote, we're voting in the United States. We're not voting in another country. I, saw, I know some border states that would agree with your number two point, which is get serious about enforcing existing laws. We've already had the law. In 1986, Simpson-Mazzoli bill was passed. Unfortunately, uh, the law enforcement uh, side of it never kicked in. And so companies such as Chipotle get away with hiring illegal immigrants and not getting fined the way they should be fined. Five-year immigration moratorium, what is that? That basically means we need to first get a handle on our entire immigration system because Gretchen, since 1986, 64 million people have been added to the United States population. Let me repeat that, 64 million. That means the size of the country of France has been added to the United States. We need to manage our system better before we can talk about amnesty or other issues concerning immigration. Number four, reevaluation of family reunification policies. A lot of big words there, but essentially, what does that mean? Essentially, what it means is that if you come into the U.S. by law, you can bring in every single member of your extended family. And that really doesn't hurt, uh, allow for a, a comprehensive solution to this massive problem. It only attracts more people. So what you call for in the book is only to be able to bring in the immediate family members. Yes, absolutely. We still need to be America. We still need to be open. This is our tradition. But we need to manage it better because 64 million puts stress on, on our economy. I want to make sure I get to number five because promote sustainability and progress in neighboring nations. But what you actually are proposing is that we would give not taxpayer money but private sector money to immigrants to go back home and create business there? Absolutely, Gretchen. I've spoken to many people from South America, especially Mexico, El Salvador, Honduras, Peru. They love their countries. They want to go back to their countries. They don't want a handout. We can provide that to them in the form of a startup capital. And if we decouple our trade from China, it would be fantastic. The only people that would be hurt would be communist regime of China. <laughs> but if we took $8 billion worth of toys, just toys that we imported from China and put it into Mexico or El Salvador, that would be $8 billion worth of sustainability for Mexicans to go back, for El Salvadorans to voluntarily go back to their you country. Know, these are such interesting concepts, and we've heard from a lot of the politicians right now differing versions of their immigration policies. But you believe that nobody right now on the political scene is talking about what you're actually talking about in your book. Unfortunately, Gretchen, not. One side wants to do a naked pandering to particular ethnic groups. The other side wants to pander maybe to the Chamber of Commerce. If our politicians adopted what I've written in Press 2 for English, we will have an economic revival and we will have done justice, not just to Americans, but to immigrants, because this is about bringing justice to both sides of the uh, argument here, immigrants and for Americans, both. Very fascinating book. Press 2 for English is the title. Dr. Rob Sabani is the author. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much, Gretchen. Appreciate it. Coming up, breaking news.